Hello, my name is Brian and welcome to Overland Calling. You don't see me spending a lot of time in campgrounds, but uh, I did a video a long time ago on a campground called The Pines. It's kind of a mix between campground and dispersed camping. Um, it's got pit toilets, picnic tables, hangers, fire rings, all that good stuff. You're kind of close in, uh, but it's different because it has no fee. A free campground. Hey, thanks Virginia. I appreciate that. April 1st through December 7th is when it's open. No fee. Got quiet hours, fire rings, and a picnic site if you're just passing through. And if you're crashing here, 21 days is your limit. There's the site map. I thought that there were more sites here, but I guess there's only 10. And a huge shout out to the Eagle Scouts. Thank you for this project. So let's hop in the truck, take a quick driving tour. You're looking at pit toilets. They've been clean every time I've been through here. Got a one-way road that kind of leads you around here. That's a nice big double site. I've stayed there before. It's a sweet one. There's our second vault toilet. Site number four, where I stayed last night. The sites are all pretty large. I'd say bigger than most campgrounds. And they're more spaced out than most campgrounds, too. Now, you're not going to have electric. You're not going to have sewer. Do have trash on site. Lots of trash. Don't use your fire rings as your trash can. Thank you for the place to sleep, Pines Campground. Oh, and by the way, if you're tired from running Potts Jeep Trail and need a place to crash, this isn't far away. Let's go exploring. Well, I'm like a couple hundred yards from the campground. And check that out. A little two track leading off into the woods. Man, this is back here a ways. Would you look at that? Oh, if I'd only known about this last night. Not that the pines is bad or anything, but holy cow, it's a big sight. Nice fire ring. 
Somebody left a lot of wood. I don't know if I'd burn that. It looks like oil soaked wood, but hey, you know. And I hear something in the background. No freaking way. If you're enjoying this content, do me a favor and hit that like button. It really helps me out and I'd really appreciate it. Throw a tent up back here and bam, you're Creekside. All right, I like the pines. And you know what? If you need a toilet, that's probably where you should stay. But holy cow, like this is a sweet dispersed camping spot right off a paved road. Like, man, this is a find. Let's see what other hidden gems Virginia's got to offer for us. All right, let's check out AT&T service because Verizon is not so hot. It's not screaming fast, but you know what? That download, I think I could make work, make work happen. Ooh, uploads a little on the trash side. All right, maybe not a work spot, but this is one heck of a spot to just come and camp. Explore more. Here we go. It's the last bit before I head home for this trip. And just down from that, we got us another campsite. Killer nice. Fire pit where somebody's trying to burn full size logs. Good luck with that. But holy cow, Creekside Camping. I like this site better than the first. Man, this is a sweet find. I love this. I mean, just going out, exploring, see what it's got to offer. This site's even further back from the road, just down maybe, I don't know, 100 yards or so from that other site. Had no idea these things were back here. And I mean, quite honestly, you, you don't. I try and give you like some starter points on YouTube and stuff like that, but I'm just looking to get you enough to get you out here. There's nothing like, it's hard to describe the feeling of, you know, just coming up with your own site. It's hard to describe that feeling, but once you've done it once, you'll know it. You'll probably be hooked. Finding your own epic camping site. Just out exploring. So, definitely highly recommend it. Oh, keep an eye out for no trespassing signs. So, you want to make sure you're on public lands. We are just down from the Pines Campground right there. There's that first site we saw. Bam, there's this one. I'm going to guess there's a good chance I'm going to find more. But, you know what? Get out here and find them yourself. I may do quick drive-bys and stuff, but I'm not going to do a full pull-in unless I find a truly epic spot. But I'll tell you what, this one's pretty close. I mean, Creekside Camping, you can't beat that. Oh, man. All right. No dice. Roads closed for maintenance would be my guess. Well, that bites. That was my whole, like... That was my whole inlet in to be able to go check out all these trails. All right, new plan. Huh, this looks interesting. Okay, I'm gay. 
Let's go check it out. All right, let's see what she has in store for us. Yeah, it could use a little maintenance. I wouldn't be bringing a sports car up this, that's for sure. Well, this trail tries really hard to be a maintained gravel road. And then it just kind of creeps into a little washout. I mean, it's not bad, not bad at all. But just keep that in mind if you're driving here. I mean, if you're in Jeep or something like that, man, who cares? But uh, yeah, I'd have all trainer better tires and just be prepared for a little less maintained sections of the road. It looks like this trail's kind of given up on being a maintained gravel road. But hey, I get a cool pick of me driving through water. That first mud hole was just kind of to lull you into a false sense of security. Because waiting for you is this next one. This trail just went from, go ahead, take your Subaru, I'd take my wife's RAV4, to holy crap, you might need a Jeep. And it's rocky. Pullout that could pretty easily be used as a camping spot. Huh. Yeah. Well, this trail's, this is a pretty legit trail. I'm glad I came down it. Well, we're at an intersection. So, Bald Mountain, I guess to the left? Jefferson National Forest? Oh no, Bald Mountain to the right? Oh hell, I don't know. Bald Mountain both ways? That makes no sense. All right. Bald Mountain both ways. That makes absolutely no sense. No wonder somebody shot it and broke it. Just kidding. Don't destroy forest signs. All right, we got another one here. So Fenwick Mines Road. Looks like it le leads that way. I don't know, this one's kind of beat up. We're gonna do a map consult. I know people complain that you gotta, you know, pay for these mapping programs, but I'll tell you what, 35 bucks or whatever it is a year, money well spent. All right, so we came in from this direction. So if I make a right, I go down to Fenwick Mines Campground. If I make a left, I go to Bald Mountain, at least the peak of Bald Mountain. Well, you know what? This road was actually shut for construction when I tried to check it out. I'm going to see how far I can make it up there. And whoa ho ho. She finally opens up into a view. Not a bad little view spot we got here. Heck yeah. Not bad at all. All right, I better start paying attention to the trail. 
Well, looky what we have here. There's a little camping spot near the top of the ridge here. Nice little fire pit. Shoved full of trash. That's awesome. Look at that. Camp Angel firewood. Looks like it's still pretty green though. You might want to let it dry out. Bring your own wood. And then coming out here. Oh yeah. That is one nice view. I'm liking this trail. I mean, it's just a forest road. Um, I mean, you know, to go to Bald Mountain. But this is pretty cool. I mean, it'd be nice if it had some more camping spots. The spot I'm in right now, well, beauty of a view out here on the rock. But it is a pretty darn tight camping spot. I'd say this is more tent friendly. I mean, put a nice tent there, camp out here, but you're pretty restricted. I ain't getting my awning out, that's for sure. I could make it work for a rooftop tent spot if I really had to. But my butt's due home today, so ain't no camping for me. All right, I'm gonna mark this one. Just past the apex of the peak of the mountain. There's a seemingly innocuous mud hole. I don't trust mud holes on this trail. I'm gonna give it a poke. What do I mean by give it a poke? Well, see how deep that rut is. See how muddy it is. Aha, that's a good mud hole. Well, I feel like mud holes. It's not that deep and it is not a soft bottom. Bam, awesome. So, I mean, you ain't gotta poke every mud hole you run into, but if you go into a deep one, well, that's your own fault. This adventure comes to an end. That's fine. We got a place we can turn off at. Oh, no, the dreaded road close sign. Oh man. Well, hey, thanks for service for uh, taking care of the roads. Much appreciated. And that was a pretty trail. I'm going to backtrack. Ah, oh, you know what? I had no intentions of making a trail video on this particular trail. But the trail up to Bald Mountain, I'll put the forest road that it is right over there. This trail, like, it was legit a good trail. I'd say most of it you can do in a stock SUV, Tacoma, definitely a Jeep. It's not difficult. Um, honestly, a Subaru. With one exception, that one mud hole you saw me go through. That sucker instantly puts it in high clearance 4x4. It's deep, it's rocky, and there's no bypass. This trail's just fun. It's pretty, it's not that hard, exception of that one mud hole which we will never forget, which I went through the first time in two wheel drive, by the way, because that stick checking thing that I showed you. Yeah, I didn't do it that time because I'm an idiot. 
almost was winching out of that bad boy and just about swapped my motor because it was a hell of a lot deeper than I thought. So anyway, great trail. Just be advised, you got to be able to get through that mud hole to get up here until they open that road. Once the construction's ended, you'll be able to have another route in here. So anyway, if you're out this way, I definitely advise it. If you want something to just kind of chill out, it's not too far away from pots, maybe you're going up there to run that, hey, this is a good one. Because if, if your vehicle can get through pots, it can get through that mud hole. Thank you for joining me. And like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Till next time, enjoy the ride.